Good evening. Welcome to another video lecture. Tonight's lecture will be concerning wave speed as it moves through different mediums, particularly strings and springs, which are kind of little tongue twisters, strings and springs. Um, for this, this will be most uh, important for using during the lab that you'll do during class with the uh, standing waves on a slinky or standing waves on a spring that you oscillate by swinging the spring back and forth as we investigate uh, wave speed. The formula that we'll be talking about is this one right here that says that wave speed depends on the tension in a string. And then this part right here is the uh, linear density. So it's the mass per length of some string or spring. So velocity is equal to the square root of the tension divided by the linear density. Um, to help kind of demonstrate that here, I have uh, this here is a frequency generator. That right now it's not oscillating back, and I have a frequency generator here, and uh, I have a string confined to a, a closed space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create standing waves, which is, uh, occur when the wave constructively interferes uh, back on itself within a closed space. Um, so first I'm going to turn it on, and it's kind of tough to see back there, so what I'm going to do is just bring this kind of close up there once I get it tuned correctly. Now I'm going to tune it to the correct frequency in which this uh, constructive interference will occur so that way it builds the, uh, the greatest uh, wave. It's going to create a standing wave on here. And give me a second. You can kind of hear it get quiet because it's just where it's right on the harmonic right there. So now if you can see it right here with the white backdrop, you see kind of this point right here would be the anti- excuse me, would be the node where there's almost no movement back and forth of the string. And then here, in this area, you kind of see, and I can pull up a sheet of paper, excuse me, along here, you can really see it oscillating back and forth, hopefully over the uh, internet right now pretty well. Um, so this here, at this point here, would be the anti-node. On this string, even though you can't see it all the way, there's a full wavelength. So right now, and I know the length of this here, um, the wavelength is equal to one meter. And from reading the frequency on here, I know I have a frequency of 22.3 hertz. From that, I can calculate the wave speed. frequency times the wavelength, and I get out that the wave speed on this particular string right here is 22.3 meters per second. Now that's pretty straightforward. Um, just kind of that calculation right there and that idea. So we have some wavelength, we have some certain wave speed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop this and I'm going to increase the tension and just I'm going to move this back here to show everyone. I'm going to increase the tension on this string here. Up here. I'm not actually going to do any measurements right now for this. This is what I want you to do within your lab. But if we look at this from this idea here, we said we increase the tension. And so there before we would expect the wave speed to increase. Now, the linear density it does change somewhat, so it's not something that's going to be constant throughout. We did the length is going to be the same, but the amount of mass for the string is now different within this length. So it's going to have that will also change, but it won't have a great of effect as the tension is increasing. So as I turn it back on again, and I'm going to bring it forward here, and now I'm going to try and tune it back to the new frequency where that constructive interference occurs. All right, and here we have it again. We have a perfect constructive interference, and I'll pull up the sheet of paper. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, you can see here is the node again, and then right here, the standing wave is produced here. Um, we have the anti-node right here. This here, again, one wavelength at any one time given in this area. So we have one wavelength, um, and so that's going to be a meter. And if we see on here, without unplugging this, our new frequency is now 38 hertz. So that means there's... Um, 38 cycles per second uh, happening here. 
And if we look here, that means our wave speed has increased. So we increase the tension by pulling up on the string. The, wave, the speed of a wave on the string has also increased. So what you're going to do with this is use this to calculate how um, your measured wave speeds, based on your frequency and wavelength calculations, how they compare to the theoretical values off of your tension, mass, and the length of the spring. All right, thank you very much. There's no questions for tonight. Just be prepared to answer these questions and complete the lab in tomorrow in class. Have a good evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. He shoots and misses.